outside the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office rain. A high of 62 degrees forecast on this unusual first day of winter. Hello and welcome to the last Mead week of the year. I'm Brian Spann. As is our custom, our final show is a look back at the year that was. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first a reminder that our award-winning newspaper, The Sound Off, published their year in review this week. You'll want to check that out. Meanwhile, we start our Mead TV year in review, going back to January and the Martin Luther King Jr. observance and guest speaker, retired Army Colonel and movie star, Colonel Greg Gadsden. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great Mead week and a great 2019. Although I never got to meet him, it's one of those examples of someone who lived a selfless life, who's, who had a cause. They were curious about my journey to Miss America, and I think I was just as curious as their journey to where they are today and why they decided to enlist. And Fort Meade Garrison Commander and Command Sergeant Major Brian Cullen joined exchange officials in a ribbon cutting ceremony. After the number crunching, Antonio Slaughter and Haley Eckelmeyer proved to be the overall men's and women's champions. You know, we live in a country with a lot of advantages, and we live in a country that is incredibly strong. Staff Sergeant Angel Rodriguez of the 780th Military Intelligence Brigade is the active duty volunteer of the year. The civilian volunteer of the year is Michelle Brittingham from the Fort Meade Tax Center. Maybe the first time a gator has been seen in the Fort Meade Pavilion. You can touch it if you'd like. Yeah. 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 Okay, I got a stretch. I got a stretch. Yeah. Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Tom Rickard thanking the Orioles for their participation in the fifth annual Youth Sports Spring Baseball Clinic with the Baltimore Club. Newly appointed Director of the National Security Agency and Commander U.S. Cyber Command, General Paul Nakasone leads the official party during the opening of last week's 32nd Annual Military Order of the World Wars Massing of the Colors. Okay, now lift the saber. One, two, three. And down. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, state your full name. Secretary of the Army Dr. Mark Esper administers the oath of enlistment to some of the Army's newest recruits. Secretary Esper was at Fort Meade recently meeting with Army recruiters. Please join me in a round of applause for your professional garrison workforce. Colonel Sprague also addressed the garrison team in his opening remarks. To the garrison team, I'm both humbled and honored to lead such a diverse and exceptional pool of service members and civilian corps professionals. Harpist Staff Sergeant Grace Bowson, one of several highlight performances by the Women's Ensemble of the U.S. Army Field Band and Soldiers Chorus at this year's observance of Women's Equality Day. This year's guest speaker was Addie Zanone. Zanone is an Army veteran, broadcast journalist, and a fellow Defense Information School graduate. The National Cryptologic Museum took possession of a recently retired Air Force EC-130H aircraft. The highlight of the celebration was the presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal to retired Chief Petty Officer Ismael Torres. The 86-year-old Torres enlisted in the Army in 1950, serving in Korea with the 65th Infantry Regiment, the Boren Quineers. I'm a kind of an emotional guy, you know. Big men aren't supposed to cry, and big men are supposed to be tough and mean and whatever. I guess I'm a real weak person because, as I tell when I work with kids, I tell them that a real man is that that has feelings. This year, the grant is being used to repair and restore about 100 feet of the Burbot Lake shoreline. The Directorate of Public Works organized a volunteer effort recently to place biologs along eroded sections of shoreline. Fort Meade Marines starting the Marine Corps birthday observance this morning with a wake-up call for Garrison Commander Colonel Eric Sprague. After the touchdown, the Army's Nick Phillips put the icing on the cake with a spectacular one-handed grab in the corner of the end zone for the two-point conversion. Final score in the 19th annual game, Army 22, Navy nil. Freedom Inn set up three serving lines for the traditional turkey dinner, but many in the crowd came for the seafood, which included Alaskan crab legs. The prime rib was also on the menu. Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Eric Sprague led a crew of senior leaders on the installation and serving dinner to the troops. I kept watch for hours so silent and still, and we both shivered from the cold night's chill. Then the soldier rolled over with a voice soft and pure, whispered, Carry on, Santa. It's Christmas Day. All is secure. Well, look at my watch, and I knew he was right. Merry Christmas, my friend. And to all, a good night. 